from Desk Lady Ada. Hey everybody, welcome to Desk Lady Ada. It's a Sunday night. Happy Mother's Day to those who celebrate. And uh, we're here at the desk where I'm doing electronics. As always, with me is Mr. Lady Ada. Word to your mother. On camera control. Over okay, there. let's uh, kick this off. We're going to do a pretty fast show. Yeah. we got a lot to do. Lady yeah, Ada, yeah. what are you working on this week? Okay, um, well first up I had a bunch of samples, so I thought I would show them off. So on the overhead, um, the first sample is this conductive rubber sheet. So this, uh, we have in the store a rubber cord, um, but some, like, this is I think used for um, like EMI gasketing because it, it has a, it has resistance. Hold on, let me dial in my multimeter and then I can measure it. So, you know, this has a, you know, 300 ohms resistance um, across it. So it's, um, it's flexible, it's conductive, and um, the resistance does change with stretching, not a ton, but it does. So maybe I'll, I'll just um, hook up these alligator clips so I can demo it. Maybe I'll put the alligator clip here and there, and then I'll just have this on the screen. So, you know, naturally it's about 350, whoops. And then, you know, you stretch it, it goes up to like 400. I'm stretching it like this, you can see it's like 400 or so. And then when it bounces back, um, it changes again, and then eventually it slowly goes back down to um, the original resistance. So kind of an interesting material. Um, what is it good for? You could make sensors or you could, you know, make like weird uh, conductive shapes that, um, or capacitive touch sensors that um, are flexible and, and curvy. So um, this is, I think, half a millimeter thick material. So I got half a millimeter and one millimeter. So that's one sample I got. Um, another sample I got is this um, motorized pot. So let me move the multimeter out of the way and turn it off, save battery. One moment, put it back on my desk. Okay, so this is a um, motorized potentiometer and um, you can see the motor here and this is a uh, five volt motor here and there's a little um, gearing kit here. I don't know if there's like multiple, you guys had one gear. And then um, there's a little belt drive that goes up so this still acts like a pot, you know, you can move it back and forth and here's the potentiometer pads here. So you can, um, and then there's like the one, you know, there's always one on the other side. So this is like the uh, one pin and then the other and then the center. And then the third pin, cause you're wondering like, why is there three pins? It should be, sorry, there's four pins total. Cause there's one here and there's three here. Um, the reason there's four pins and not three like you'd expect for like, you know, one, two, and then the slider is because there's also a capacitive touch pin, which is the resistance. It's just actually connected um, to the metal, I think, of this at the, at the check because I just like looked at the data sheet. So it lets you know when you, you're touching the slider. Of course, you have to have a metal slider cap, um, but that way you can tell when somebody's touching it because if you're driving it and somebody's touching it, it should immediately release the drive and let the, the person move it. Um, so for my demo, I've got, I just hooked up a, uh, Metro Mini and, um, I have my little DRV 8830 driver chip going on there. And then, um, let's see, I thought I had this going. Maybe I don't. Oops, I hope I didn't reprogram it. I might have reprogrammed it. One moment. Let me check my... Arduino port. It thinks it's powered, but it's not. So why not? Uh oh, I hope I didn't break it. Well, I had the live video. I had the video that we shot. I guess I can get that in case. Uh... Yeah, I was not expecting this to not work, but I also I don't know if like maybe something got loose. I also could have like broken it. All right. Do you um, want to play the video? Well, uh, it'll just take me a second or so because it's uh, not available. Okay, why don't you, why don't I look at something else and then, um, weird, I have to figure out. I also never used this uh, motor driver before, so it's like the first time I'm yeah. using it. Um, another sample I got is this DWM 
um, 1000. So this is a um, ultra wide band module. I actually got these a while ago and I've been meaning to use them and I kind of get around to it. So these are kind of interesting because they look like, you know, wireless modules, but what they do is, um, yet, you know, they're, they're 2.4 gigahertz. And I think it's based off of like Zigbee or something, but what they're used for is, um, I guess they use like ultra wideband signaling and use like the time of flight or like the frequency change bounce rate or something between these modules um, to do indoor positioning, uh, which is a really hard problem. A lot of people are always asking me, how do you do indoor positioning? Like I want to know where in 3D space something is in a room. And I'm like, that's actually really, really hard. Um, it's, it's quite easy to detect outside. Uh, where you are using GPS, it's good within 10 meters, but if you want something precise, um, you know, yeah, you can do like Bluetooth RSSI signaling, but um, you know, these, these ultra wideband modules are kind of the only solution I know of. I know that there's also like, you know, Espressive tried to implement something like this with um, their modules. And I think also, um, there was also an attempt to do this with um, microchips, one of the microchip boards. They had like some capability to do like time of flight distance measurement. But um, what's nice about these modules is they actually have like API and code ready to go. So um, I designed a feather wing to go with these because they, they fit very nicely on like a feather wing shape. They're very, very slim. Um, and they use SPI. And again, there's, you know, the, the company publishes Arduino library code and Python library code to interface with them. So the only thing is, you know, I bought four because you need to have, um, you know, two base stations at least, probably three base stations in order to, to triangulate where in space this thing is. So probably three, you know, static devices and then one free floating device. And then you can, you know, you can have as many more free floating devices as you want within your 3D space. And so um, one thing that's really common, uh, you know, folks, who contact me is they're doing like theater or like escape rooms or interactive art. And this is, you know, a problem they're trying to solve. They're like, I want to know when a thing has moved a certain distance or to a certain part of the room. So, um, another funky sample. So this is the DWM module kit. And there's a new version that just came out to 3000. I don't know the difference. I think it seems, it seems like to have a couple updates. All right. Did you want to try to, play? yeah, the video. You're okay. Ready? Why don't you play the video? Yeah, Cause so my thing stopped working. Past us did a good job. Yeah. Lydia, what is this? This is a motorized pot. Not sure if you've ever seen one, but it's a potentiometer, and you can see the potentiometer um, points here. And then there's a motor that connects to it, and it actually goes through this little uh, gear, and it can move the slider back and forth. So you can either, it has a touch sensor too, by the way, for capacitive touch. So you can either set the resistance, um, or you can have it automatically set to like a presetting. And I'm controlling it with this breakout board that um, I kind of like designed right before COVID and then never finished because I got distracted with COVID uh, with a DRV 8833 STEMIQT breakout. So um, good news is uh, this works and this works and this is kind of fun. Seems alive. It's almost like a possessed electronic. Yeah, it is a little bit yeah. like angry. Yeah, less, no, more. No, angry. Yes, it's like, hi, no. here I am. Yeah, maybe, cool. maybe it's waving hello. Yeah, hi. All right, so this is the motorized pot. Uh, being driven by a STEM QT motor board. Okay, we're back. Okay, one second. I just, You're gone. I have another sample that I thought I could maybe, 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 maybe. Because I don't remember which one of the samples I was testing. I also have this sample. Maybe I'll quickly test it out. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the things with, with live demos. Well, we have a video, so it doesn't matter. I could have even pretended that wasn't real, but I feel like... I think the motor driver, I, I think I, I busted the motor driver. I feel like you should driver. always be honest with the... No, the no, no, I think, I think, um, I think I broke the motor driver, because this other, uh... Oh, you know what I can do is I can just, um, I can just connect it up directly to power. So hold on, let me, um, let me grab my screwdriver. And then, uh, I'll just, we'll do it live! I'll just, uh, remove... All right, how about... Do you think you can handle a question while I'm doing this? Yeah, because I'm just doing I'm just mechanical gonna, I'm just gonna stuff. This. Yeah. Okay, my ESP32 S2 Feather won't go out of its FTHR S2 boot state when I upload the CircuitPython UF2 file to it. It just resets and comes back with neither the UF2 file nor CircuitPython. Do you know why? Um, post in the Discord for CircuitPython because it's very hard to help um, okay. when I yeah, can't type right back. Yeah, post in the Discord, help with CircuitPython, or 
Just post, post um, in, the in the forums. Yeah, you're probably just selecting the wrong file. Yeah, you might ask for file. some screenshots or some other info. Okay, so... Um, okay, it looks like you got some. Yeah, on. I'm just like manually... <laughs> I'm doing manual H bridge. Beep, so, beep, yeah, this is what the motor beep, driver would be doing. Beep, just going back and forth. Beep. Um, but it does work when uh, the motor driver isn't busted. Um, and uh, I thought these would be really fun to have. They're used in um, AV uh, boards, like really nice ones where you can like make presets. This is kind of fun. I can I can like move it and I'll it'll shift back. Um, it's you know they're used. Um, you know you you can create presets and then like you can load the preset for like whatever music type you're doing and all the all the um, filter. Uh, adjustments, you know, if you have like a cutoff or um, bandpass filters or, um, you know, a treble or bass adjusts, they will all automatically go to where you want. And then uh, once it's preset, you can adjust it so you're not like sitting there and like tweaking, you know, 25 um, sliders all at once. So uh, this is fun. This is from Alps, but I don't know the part number off the top of my head. I don't know, maybe 72cc. But um, there you go. Yes, yeah, so this is a. Uh, this is one type. There's another type I got. Um, I didn't like this one as much because it was it was this motor was chunkier. Even though this was less expensive, also I didn't like this open top. I like that this type has a kind of a more closed top and doesn't have the belts as exposed, whereas this one has um, you know this exposed belt, which I thought was a little scary. So this sample did not make it. The other sample did. Okay, uh, I think that's it. Oh yeah, and then I'll, I'm gonna transition along. I'm gonna just put everything away. Put everything away. Okay, hole in one. Um, okay, and then finally the thing I'm f working on tonight is my um, NAU uh, 7802 tester. So this is the NAU 7802. Um, and this is a um, Wheatstone, it's actually a 24-bit ADC, um, which I'm using as a Wheatstone bridge amplifier, uh, such as for use with strain gauges. Um, so strain gauges, you know, you connect, um, uh, they're, they're basically Wheatstone bridges, you connect, you know, two corners of the bridge to power and ground, and then you can measure the differential. So like the resistance changes through the differential um, ADC measurements of the white and green wire. Um, which is uh, awesome. Uh, the only thing is um, I couldn't get these chips for a really long time. Uh, and then a shipment that I ordered, you know, it was affected by the chip shortage. Um, pretty much everything from Nouveauton got really affected. But um, I finally got uh, my shipment in. Yay. So uh, these chips came in. You can see the prototype. Um, so I'm just working on the tester now uh, using this um, uh, Metro board, it's Arduino compatible. And what I'm going to do is this cable here, I've got to, to plug in, um, you know, to have just do a measurement um, to, to test the ADC. Uh, you know, I have this cable, and then uh, this will be cut off and, and soldered to um, strain gauge wires here, like one, two, three, four. And that way we can, uh, you know, easily plug it in. And then during test, you know, if you just squeeze this, um, it'll see that the... Uh, the resistance changes, the ADC changes. Okie dokie. Do you want to uh, go into Great Search? Yep. Let's kick it right off. Where in the world is that part I need? The Great Search with DJ Key. The Great Search brought to you by Adafruit and DigiKey. Key. Lady Data uses her powers of engineering every single week to help you find the things you need, Lady Data, what is on the Great Search this week. Okay. So this week, um, because I am working on my NAU 7802 tester, maybe you can go to the overhead. I'll show that again. So uh, the NAU 7802, it's a 24-bit ADC. Um, it's got differential inputs, which you need because uh, it's good for measuring Wheatstone bridge-type devices like strain gauges. But there's other, there's a lot of other sensors that are, are Wheatstone bridge that are very sensitive, um, although uh, strain gauges are kind of the most popular. And... Um, uh, uh, the, so the NAU 7802 I ordered um, a, a few uh, months ago and it finally came in so I'll be able to make ours um, but the thing is that if somebody else was like hey I want to make my own you know Wheatstone Bridge amplifier I'd be like hey you can't get any because if you search on DigiKey this isn't going to come into stock till um, like early 2023. Um, so I thought for the great search, what we could do is 
I could find you uh, an alternative because I got mine, um, but maybe you want yours and you don't want to wait um, eight, 10 months until these chips come back into stock. So let's identify another um, good Wheatstone Bridge amplifier. So I'm going to look for something that's 24 bit. Um, I use I squared C, but maybe SPI is also good. So we'll look for both. Um, and we want something that has differential inputs and something, which is pretty common with ADC, so I'm not too worried about it, is in stock and it has a programmable game. So let's go to the computer. So one of the things that's kind of nice about um, the uh, NAU7802 is it has, you know, the, the, the rate isn't very high. The reason it's inexpensive is it's like, you know, you pretty much run it at 80 samples per second. And that's great for just measuring weight. It's not good for measuring, um, you know, a lot of like EMG type sensors or whatever, anything that's precision that you need fast responses on. But for weight, weight doesn't change that much. You know, you put something on the scale and then, you know, you're okay waiting two seconds until you get a stable uh, measurement. But one thing that is really nice is it has this built-in gain. Uh, so programmable gain amplifiers is, is quite nice. It has this little analog section inside that'll let you adjust the gain. Um, higher gain usually means more noise, and so you want to have like a balance. Um, but you know, the higher the gain, also the smaller the signals you can read. So you know, you, you want a balance of like being able to read small signals, um, but also not you know blowing out your range because if there's um, a lot of movement in the signal, um, your, your PGA is going to uh, overflow your 24-bit reading. Uh, so you can dynamically change it, which is quite nice. Uh, so uh, let's go to DigiKey. And so the chip I'm using is the NAU7802, which is this chip. Um, the dip is in stock, so if you happen to be okay with that, uh, they do have locks, which is wonderful. Um, but the chip that I've been using is the uh, SMT, the SOIC version. Um, and then if you look, uh, you know, it's not going to be in stock for a bit and it could be even longer. So let's, um, let's find a good alternative. Um, so I'm just going to look for 24 bits. Uh, I'm not going to select the other uh, inputs. I will only go with one ADC because you're always going to pay for more ADCs and you definitely only need one. Um, and I definitely want to be surface mount, but everything else is kind of like up for grabs. Like I don't really care if the voltage range is, you know, 3.3 volts and also features, you know, there's always like a range of features possible. Um, and the configuration also might be different. Also, I'll show you the differential and single ended, like pretty much any ADC, once you get to like 16 bit, they're all going to have differential inputs. It's, it's, it's actually quite rare to not see a differential input on, um, and ADC once you're paying more than like a couple dollars on it. Okay, so let's go for active. And again, we're we're gonna we're gonna later filter for in stock. Um, but I'm going to exclude marketplace so we only see we don't see like the reseller uh, once. Okay. Um, so samples per second against we don't we don't really care about the samples per second. Um, input type I don't actually totally trust this, so I'm gonna ignore it as well. Um, and then what I will do is I'm going to go for the data interface. So, um, SPI is okay. And I want I squared C I 2 S I don't want cause it's audio input and parallel. I don't want and LVDS. I don't want, so I'm just going to go for SPI. I don't know what serial is. A serial could be your, or, uh, or it could be SPI or it could be I 2 C. And then, um, let's search for those and then um okay so there's a lot of options which is good but a lot of them are kind of expensive so i'm going to just sort by price because that's what we we care about and as expected um the nau 7802 are like the cheapest so that the ones that we can't get are about like a dollar or two which is uh unfortunate because we can't get them um, but there is this one over here this 56 35 65 from microchip um, one thing to note is it has much higher sample rate. It has uh, 153K, which is great. It still has two inputs. It's also differential seeing on it. However, it's only I squared C. Um, one thing that's a little, you know, I was a little, at first I was worried because I was like, oh, this doesn't have programmable gain. Uh, it also has a lower voltage range. Like it only goes up to 3.3 volts. 
Um, but when I looked at the data sheet, because I was like, well, you know, I got to look to to make sure does it really not have gain. It actually does have programmable gain. It has it goes up to sixty. It goes up to sixty four times gain, whereas the NAU seven eight zero two does one hundred twenty eight. Sixty four is still pretty good. Um, you know, I think it's probably fine. Uh, it has uh, you know external clock selector just like the NAU. It has differential. Uh, inputs like you'd expect there's gain error calibration so you can do and it's like very tiny it's kind of cute it's like hi I'm just a little I'm just like a little board here and um, you know if you search for uh, you know a typical application for a ratio metric a Wheatstone bridge uh, pressure sensors and load cells it's very common so this is you know what it would look like uh, pretty straightforward you have the um, like the NAU, it's kind of nice. It can do the, the reference in and out. So you have, um, you, you know, any, you know, if you're doing a ratio metric input, you want to make sure that your positive input to the Wheatstone bridge is exactly the same as your positive reference to the ADC. And so any noise uh, gets canceled out because, again, you're only measuring the, the difference between um, the, the voltage divider between the positive and the negative rail on the bridge here. Um, so what's nice is that you've got the reference in plus and the reference in minus, and you just make sure they match up. Uh, and they just need an RC filter. So this is for like uh, you know RTDs, um, for uh, pressure sensors, for um, load cells like you know the before. You also use it for other stuff like um, thermocouple amplifiers and stuff, which need uh, precision uh, differential inputs as well because you're measuring little microvolt. Uh, changes on your KTEC thermocouple. So this chip will do the job quite nicely. Uh, looks like there's a few in that family, the 356X. Um, they're all fairly inexpensive, comes with a couple options. Um, and uh, this one at least is in stock, so that's that's great. Um, but let's, uh, let's, let's filter for only in stock. The other option I found, um, so the that one was SPI. And you might be like, well, I really don't want SPI. I really want I squared C. Um, well, I squared C, there's a couple, but most of them are not in stock. The first one that's in stock, that's I squared C. Let's quickly go over here and select I2C. Not a lot of things in stock or, or normally stocking, um, but this one did come up. This is the ADS-1219, um, which I downloaded the data sheet. Uh, so this is fairly also, you know, pretty fast. It's a one a kilo sample per second. Um, ADC, uh, this doesn't have as many programmable gains, though. It only goes up to four times gains. So, you know, I don't know if, you know, it could be good enough for, a, you know, Wheatstone Bridge, but I think it would be tough without another amplifier. Um, that said, it has four inputs. So this is like... You know, I think you could use it with a Wheatstone bridge, but I think you'd probably want, um, you wouldn't get as much signal. You probably want amplifier. Yeah, they don't have a recommendation. So, you know, it's the one that's I squared C, but it's not, it's not great for that use purpose. However, it is I squared C in 24 bits. So depending on what you're using it for, um, you know, if it's, if it's not a load cell, it might be okay. If you are using a load cell, I would probably, and you don't mind going with SPI, I would say that the MCP356 series is your best bet. So you got two options to pick your pick your poison, differential options. That's a great charge. All right, and that is our show for okay. tonight. Wonderful. Um, Maybe you can try to take a look at this one. Is there, this is a question from earlier. Uh, it was about this. Corner. Um, I don't know if this was related to our show. I don't know what they mean by yeah. NAU seventy eight oh two talk. We're just uh, we're I it's it's an old design and I'm I'm going to you know I couldn't get chips for like a year, uh, but I can uh, get chips. So we're going to. Um, you know, I want to finish the tester, and we're going to go into manufacturing. Okay. I'm not sure. All right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, there's no been, I mean, it's been two years, so unless you were here pre-COVID, you would have missed when I first designed that board. Okay, cool. 
All right, I just wanted to make sure yeah. I didn't miss that. Okay, well, thanks, everybody. We'll be doing the shows during the week. Uh, we have lots of fun surprises, content we're posting. Thanks for spending your time with us. We very much appreciate it. We're doing this thing together. See you during the week. All right, thanks, everybody. We'll have some live shows, and I think Scott might be back doing Yay. his stream this Friday. Yay. Okay.